Hi guys, Nick Thompson, veterinary surgeon and uh, Holistic Vet at holisticvet.co.uk. Um, my friends at ProDog Raw, who have done the Ditch the Dry campaign, which I think is a very good thing to do, um, have asked me to teach you a little few things about arthritis and inflammation. So that's what we're going to do. Before we start, just a, a, a little kind of introduction to say, whenever you start a new product, be it from the vet or be it from uh, uh, one of the uh, raw food companies or a supplement company, don't stop the medication that you're on immediately allow improvement to be seen with the new product and then that will allow you to reduce the old uh, meds that you were using that's the safest way to do it and remember as with itchy dogs uh, the product that you use is only part of the solution you've also got to look at the um, exercise management and all of those things okay so just uh, let's bear those in mind so canine Canine osteoarthritis. Canine, obviously, to do with dogs. Osteo is bone. Arthritis. Arthra refers to um, a joint, and itis refers to inflammation. So when people talk about arthritis, that's it. They're just saying inflammation of the bone. You could say that more of the joints, and and that's really all arthritis means um, until you get into much more detail so um, when we look at inflammation and, and and arthritis in particular there are three major causes of uh, of, of arthritis uh, number one is the genes that you're born with the second thing uh, which you can do something about unlike your genes is the nutrition that you get from day one okay really really important and and probably equally important is the amount of exercise or the amount of exercise that you don't take like excessive ex exercise like this little jack russell for example um he's uh, uh really really going for it and um may have to pay for that in later life um it's that whole th the, that that old thing about you can't burn the candle at both ends, yeah? And what we're going to talk about uh, in a bit is uh, how to treat uh, early arthritis, and we're going to look at some uh, supplements that are available that one can use for those early stages of arthritis. So first of all, let's just have a little look at um, uh, arthritis. You can see it on the diagram. Um, with, on the... On the left hand side there you've got a normal joint obviously and you'll notice you've got bone uh, which is um, opposing uh, bone below so you could think of this as the knee joint if you like but in between in between those bones so that you don't get grating you have got cartilage you see in blue you've got the cartilage and then in uh, then you've got this green which is a it's a, a a liquid layer called synovial fluid and it's like really thick amazing sticky cushioning liquid like brake fluid if you like uh, and that's produced by the synovium it's a membrane that produces the synovial fluid and that's what kind of lubricates the joint and so if we look over on the right what happens and what we're trying to do is slow down this inevitable decline all joints decline with age and our job to try and reduce the amount of drugs that we use our job is to reduce the rate of decline as much as possible and by do, by reducing the rate of decline and reducing inflammation we allow greater mobility through a, a, a large proportion of the dog's life so when things, when the joint um, degenerates, you'll see that the first thing is you get a, a thinning and a destruction of cartilage, which can then cause destruction of bone. 
um, you'll see that the synovial uh, uh, fluid is much reduced. You'll see that the inflammation is taking it is, is, is affecting the synovial uh, the synovial membrane, synovium, um, which in some cases can overproduce synovial fluid and you get kind of a housemaid's knee effect. You can feel it in dog's elbows here, for example, and sometimes in the stifle. Um, and you will get kind of grating. We call it crepitus, where you get actually can hear or you can feel crunch, crunch, crunch. And that's that's not a great sign um, when that happens in humans, in our hips, for example, or in our knees. That's when you're going to get them replaced. We are doing that with with cats and dogs nowadays, but it's quite a big job and, and we're not doing it a lot uh, as we are in, in people with with people. We're doing it at the drop of a hat, uh, but in, in dogs and cats, it's not as common, although possible that is a the uh, a lateral a side view of an elbow of a dog and you can see that it's lots of clean lines and it's very clear and you can get the impression that it's a it's a very healthy joint it's on the right hand side that's the, the marker there if we overlay a slightly less clear but i think you get the impression that there's a lot more going on where, first of all, we had clean lines. We've got excess bone deposition. We've got the the uh, the uh, gap between the bones is, is not as as uniform. We've got bone deposition and where where, it get, where the, it's whiter on the X-ray. And we've got bone uh, um, uh, being uh, not eaten away but but, but um, it would be called osteoporosis it's thinning of the bone where it's more more black where the x-rays pass through more quickly so this is what happens with our elbow joints with with dog's elbow joints okay and it's all about inflammation so let's have a look at genes nutrition and exercise these are the three key factors uh, so as I was saying you can't do a lot about your genes. OK, if you're going to get a puppy, then, you know, to see the pedigree of mum and dad and and to choose them as wisely as possible is a really good idea. And if there's hip scoring, you can see the hip scores on both sides is a very good idea or elbow scoring and, and, and what have you. Um, but it still doesn't guarantee things. But do what you can to look at the parents, because if you've got parents who were arthritic early in their, you know, from kind of from middle age, then the chances are that the, the, the um, pups are going to do the same from middle age. Yeah, they're not going to they're not going to have a long and, and mobile um, middle age. They're going to get get creaky earlier than they would otherwise if they had really, really good genes. Now. Genes, nutrition, exercise. Nutrition is something that you can do something about. Now, this is ProDog. There are lots of great companies on the on the on the market, and your job as an owner is to ensure that you feed the pup with the best quality food that you possibly can. Raw food, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, ditch the dry. Um, I don't think that one can feed a dog optimally using kibbled dried kibbled food okay that's just the way i see it and hundreds if not thousands of vets around the around the world see it in exactly the same way and we're testing that hypothesis every single day yeah we're giving we're giving raw food to dogs, young dogs, old dogs, and we're seeing fantastic results with uh, joint disease and with reducing uh, uh, problems with arthritis in older dogs. So choose a really great food. Uh, if you can get the breeder to feed from three weeks of age, then so much the better. I think this is really important. If you can choose from uh, parents who have been fed raw food or even two generations of raw food, that's even better. The, the, we, I did do a study about four or five years ago where the consensus among 79 vets from around the world was that if you can get uh, second generation 
raw fed dogs then they're just uh much much more robust strong and uh, and that is very much our experience so uh nutrition um and exercise where does nutrition and exercise meet at obesity or slimness and, and and trimness obviously this is an extreme picture but just to say uh even if a dog is even slightly overweight that will have a massive impact because remember that's those kilos they are they are carrying those around every moment of every day that they're on their feet that's that's having that 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 impact in physics force is mass yeah the weight of a, an object mass times acceleration so it means that the force that goes through any of the joints in the body depend on the weight of that dog is it appropriate for the strength of that dog and the acceleration so if you've got a a heavy ish dog even mildly and they're running around like mad inappropriately when they're a little too young that's really going to have a major impact um, just as we know with our children if they are carrying too much weight when they're young then that will that will catch up with them for the rest of their days yeah that will have an impact on their longevity on arthritis on uh, prospects of cancer uh, atherosclerosis heart disease and all these things okay so inflammation is at the heart of most modern disease it used to be that you would you as a human you would die of infectious disease you die of the plague or or or, or some infection uh or flu or something like that but nowadays it's non-communicable disease which is cancer and heart disease and and our dogs are exactly the same they are getting diabetes they are getting obesity they are getting uh heart disease these these kind of things so it seems trivial but 70 percent of dogs in the uk are obese or overweight and you will pay for it obese dogs can live up to two years less long that's not a very good way of putting it uh trim slim fit and healthy dogs can live two years longer than an obese dog um so that's really something to bear in mind two years uh in an average dog you know average spaniel say which who's going to live maybe 12 14 years on average at the moment uh that's very significant so it's really something to conjure with getting the diet right getting everybody li slim slim and trim is a really good idea um the environment the environment is is really important you notice this lovely dog older dog but do you notice the floor yeah it's a lovely parquet floor which is wonderful to have in the house it's cool warm in winter and cool in summer and all that kind of stuff but the problem is there are moths attracted to the light i'm filming this at night the problem is that uh old older dogs and younger dogs will will slip on these floors which is very uh poor or bad for their confidence at moving about when they're very young or very old uh and is is doesn't help them because they need that firm footing in order to not jar their joints when they put the foot down they need to know that it's not going to slide away from them so it's very important uh if you've got an old a younger dog or an older dog that you get some mats down doesn't look great but it's it's better than having to give medicines because the joints are being overly inflamed because of your lovely parquet flooring so you know um, crack on with with those mats i would suggest um I do as I say, not as I do. This is a picture of of uh, Taylor, who is my wife's dog, who we used to have. He went to heaven about four years ago, and uh, this is Arthur, uh, our son. He was about one year old. Taylor was about eight, nine years old at the time, and it's just a nice picture. But what I'm saying is, this is uh, Ellie's mum's place where Taylor lived, and look at the floor. Yeah. It was like that. It was like an uh, an ice rink throughout, and his hips weren't great. And I'm sure that that was contributory. Every time he came down, the the, the, the carpeted 
uh, stairs, he would hit the parquet flooring and uh, uh, um, he would skid. So, not good. You heard it here. Um, do as I say, not as I do. Okay. So, what treatments have we got open to us? So, for early arthritis, I think one of the one of the most important um, things that one can bring to bear is rest. If the dog goes and chases squirrels and it and prangs something, one of the most important things for me is to rest the dog for a good few days. Just lead walking and take it easy for a few days. And because Mother Nature, if it's just soft tissue injury, it's usually pretty good at sorting herself out. You can use homeopathics, Ruta Russ and Arnica homeopathics. You can you can um, uh, use uh, chondroitin, glucosamine supplements. We're going to talk about those in a minute. You can use fish oil supplements. I think all dogs should be on fish oil supplements from uh, their uh, really early age for neurological development through their life just to help with reducing inflammation and very much so into their older age when uh, fish oil can help with your joints, can help with your skin, can help with hormones. So really um, very much uh, to be to be to be um, considered. OK, but with with early onset stiffness, arthritis, not going up the stairs quite as well as they used to chondroitin, glucosamine, supplements, fish oil. But also remember really simple things like canine osteopathy. If you had a bad uh, back or stiff hips or something like that, then wouldn't you go and see somebody about your back? You'd go and see the back man uh, or the person to fix your back. So uh, let's not forget these. The people... Uh, oh, and um, uh, ProDog, the guys who are sponsoring... Our, our, our little lesson this evening um, they've got a product called flex and i'm just gonna i'll talk to you about that towards the end of our, our session today this is my osteopath he comes to the practice um every fortnight and uh he's called tony nevin and when he's not dealing with people and uh, dogs and cats and birds of prey in the uk for his holidays he goes to africa and works with elephants and rhinos and giraffes and things like that. Can you imagine being an osteopath treating a giraffe with a bad neck? That's what he does. I kid you not. Tony Nevin, he's a really nice chap. This is how I met him. I was working in a practice where uh, they did. They were doing specialist birds, bird of prey work. And he would come along and he would help the vets there to uh, rehabilitate these birds. So... A really, really special, special guy. Um, physiotherapy is also incredibly useful. Around near us in Yulee, South Gloucestershire, we've got Tace. And uh, she does a lot of work. She also works for the Agility, GB Agility team. And she works with rugby teams. Uh, but I think uh, she does a lot of work with dogs and horses. And does a lot of really great stuff. Uh, with those guys so she's there um, and she doesn't pay me anything for this I just think she's very gifted at uh, what she does she there are many gifted people around um, find people who are near you who can help and you know uh, and, and use them you know if you had a bad back you'd be going to the back person uh, or bad leg bad knee bad whatever bad neck let's use these people I would suggest even a checkup every year okay i do i go and see tony every year and he just gives me a once over because i know that I, i'm going to be standing in funny ways or i'm going to put my hip or my my back out or something like that so really worth bearing that in mind so there's that's tace allen uh, in newly south gloucestershire um for in the early stages of, acu of acupuncture in the early stages of arthritis do consider acupuncture okay dogs tolerate it very well cats tolerate it not quite as well but but dogs tolerate it incredibly well look at this little daxi with lots of lots of uh, needles going on um it's really really worthwhile as far as i'm concerned anything that allows us to delay the uh, the onset of using non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like galaprant like previcox like metacam i don't like metacam personally uh, there are other things that you can use. So um, let's 
consider uh, acupuncture uh, with these things. The place to go f to find out your nearest acupuncturist is the Associated Association of British Veterinary Acupuncturists, abva.co.uk. Go and see them and uh, they or go and see the website and they'll tell you who's, who's close to you. CBD oil can be very useful. Um, make sure you use a good company. Uh, we're cur currently using a product by Naked Leaf. We also use a, a kind of a, a fairly homegrown product that is, is grown near us in Somerset. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the Naked Leaf product. This is one called Simply CBD, who I used because it was a good picture. Um, I'm not sure if they're good or bad, you'd have to uh, give them a ring and, and, and make, a, make a choice on that. But it can be very useful um, for helping with sore and inflamed joints. Um, hydrotherapy, really very, very, very useful. Um, I would suggest it's a very good idea from early stiffness, because if you can maintain joint strength with non-concussive exercise, uh, then it's a really, really great idea. Um, uh, so two types of hydrotherapy. One is where the, somebody gets in the pool with them in a, in a they're in a, the human is in a wetsuit and the dog uh, is, is in a kind of buoyancy jacket and they, were, uh, they, they have guided and um, measured um, swimming. And the other is that you have a treadmill where you have kind of a glass tank, you walk in the back of it onto a treadmill that goes along the back is closed and then the water level is is raised to what an appropriate level and so there's resistance as you walk on the treadmill very very useful can be a little pricey but you know when you compare it with the price of, of the drugs it's really very worthwhile and if using hydrotherapy can delay the onset of us having to use drugs then that's a really good thing, a really good thing. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the supplements that we can uh, consider um, when we're looking at products to, to, to buy for our dogs. Um, before we start, I would say that find, find a product that works for your dog. Yeah, try it for a month, and if it works, great, stick with it. And um, if you're not sure whether the product that you're using at the moment is working or not, stop it. Stop it cold turkey. If you can't see any difference in the mobility of the dog, it wasn't helping. You need to start something else. If, um, if uh, there is a great difference between uh, the dog on the product and the dog off the product, then you know that you've got a, a, a really useful product. The uh, the Proflex Flex product, they are they say they're so confident in their product that if you buy it from them, then uh, they will give you a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not completely happy with the results that you see, which as far as I can see, has got to be a good thing. So let's look at some of the some of the uh, ingredients that, 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 that various manufacturers will put into their products. Um, I'm just going to skim over these. I put a little bit of detail here uh, so that if you want to go through and look through in detail, you, you can do. But I don't want to um, uh, get stuck on any one, one um, uh, ingredient too much. MSM is organic sulfur and it has an anti-inflammatory effect. It's utilized by many, many of the uh, tissues within the body, uh, including muscles and joints and ligaments and what have you. And some dogs have great benefit. It also can be very useful if with dogs with itchy skin conditions. Okay, so definitely worth a go. Pretty cheap and cheerful and it's very non-toxic as well. So it's a good one to look at within any product. Fish oil and fish collagen are to do with quality of uh, skin uh, because your skin is made primarily of oily tissue. Yeah, So if you've got good quality omega-3s going in, you've got anti-inflammatory effects. Those anti-inflammatory effects also help with the uh, with the joints. Um, and again, hormones are influential in joint and skin health. And so omega-3s and uh, fish oils will uh, are kind of 
building blocks for the hormones that we have in our bodies and our dogs have in their bodies and so really really useful so these are very useful things to look at within products hemp protein the flex product contains hemp protein and when that's combined with fish oils that can really they can but kind of the, the sum of the two can be greater than the uh the the the, the, the effects of the individual products so definitely uh, well worth a look there and protein obviously if you're not getting enough protein in the diet which you should be if you're on a raw food diet but so let's say you're on a kibble diet then um, getting some good quality protein into you is going to be a, a game changer turmeric ah we love turmeric it's really really lovely stuff you can find it in golden paste golden paste is turmeric and um, coconut oil and pepper black pepper and uh so turmeric's wonderful it's an it comes from the ayurvedic tradition where <clears throat> where it's um it's an, it's used as an anti-cancer it's antioxidant it's anti-inflammatory um it's kind of all around it's good for your circulation it gives the it's 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 uh if you're not familiar with it it's what gives the uh, many curries their yellowy orangey rich flavor and color um and it's yeah it's basically it's very it's very good for you it's very safe and um very anti-inflammatory so good for your skin good for your joints and yeah can't go wrong with plenty of turmeric chlorella chlorella is a is a kind of a blue green algae that's a kind of a microscopic view that you can see on the uh, on the screen there um and basically these are tiny little critters that um grow and cr produce very high concentrations of essential nutrients which are kind of more dense than we get in many of the of the foods that we that we that we eat. you know you think oh yeah we'll eat sp um, spinach and kale and what have you and they're really good for you yes they are but chlorella the density of nutrients within uh within the chlorellas and the spirulinas of this world is is, is amazing they are real classic superfoods so good for your immune system good for um cell function um a lot of minerals and and, and vitamin elements within uh within chlorella so it's nice stuff to use chondroitin many products many um many of the uh arthritic arthritis products will control will will, will contain chondroitin and glucosamine uh, these are essentially molecules that we find within um, within cartilage that we can find in say it, we use it from beef uh, trachea or the famous one is um, green lip muscle these are just natural sources of chondroitin and glucosamine that we can then take on board <clears throat> the a well-fed raw fed dog is probably taking on quite a lot of chondroitin and glucosamine because they have the cartilage ground into the bone which is within the within the diet and <clears throat> so they are they, they kind of have quite a lot of this through their lifetime but topping these type of things the chondroitin and the next one is the glucosamine topping these things up in old age can sometimes have that nutraceutical effect can have that extra anti-inflammatory effect that extra um uh taking down uh, inflammation and pain so that's that's can be uh really useful nice picture don't you think uh, golden, golden retriever my practice manager would really like me for that because she has a golden retriever and finally vitamin c vitamin c is just it's cheap it's easy to get it's really healthy and i like to put all my oldies on on vitamin c uh technically dogs make it themselves but do they make enough you know a lot of those studies were done a very long time ago before we were using antibiotics extensively in dogs and vitamin c is, is, is synthesized by the bugs within the gut and therefore uh, I'm not sure how much vitamin C the average modern dog actually makes. And if they do make some, I'm not sure they make a lot. And therefore supplementing it at a nutraceutical level. So you have this, this, this large amount of vitamin C going in so that you have 
uh, the anti-inflammatory, antioxidant effect. Also, if you think of uh, scurvy in the old days in the, when they were sailing in the high seas and they, they hadn't discovered uh, limes and fruit um, to ward off scurvy, what happened is your teeth dropped out because the, the periodontal ligaments weren't very strong. Uh, you, your, your, your joints got very sore, your skin uh, uh, tore and cut very easily because vitamin C is, is integral to really good, strong um, uh, ligaments and tendons and um, the, the, uh, the, the tissues that kind of hold your body together. Yeah, skin and muscle and things is, is, is important, but this, this, the, uh, the, the tissue that, 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 that holds all of that together is kind of the unsung hero of the body and vitamin C is very important in uh, supporting that inter, inter, interstitial tissue. Great. So there you go. And um, uh, <laughs> Protog wanted me to say that all of those things are contained within Flex. So I think that you need to find a product that suits you. But uh, and if your product that you're on at the moment is working, great. Stick with it. However, if you need to look for something else. These guys do a 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, all the ingredients we've just described just there, they're all completely legitimate for helping with tissue health and strength and helping with, the, with, 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 with body immunity. So uh, I think you can't go wrong to give that a go. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, is that the final one? No, that's our final one. In order to prevent the inevitable destruction or to slow down, should I say, the inevitable destruction of, of our joints, it will happen to us, it will happen to our dogs, we can help to feed those tissues to slow down the joints. Remember, if you're on uh, medication from the vet's, don't stop it immediately if you bring in a new supplement. Um, and remember that supplements and drugs are only part of the picture. Half of what we've described this evening has not had anything to do with drugs. It's to do with osteopathy. It's to do with physiotherapy. It's to do with um, not over-exercising our puppies. It's being careful with the floor. You know, all these things. So think of the big picture um, and you will uh, uh, almost certainly be able to slow the progression of arthritis and inflammation within your dog. Best of luck. <laughs>